let's move along to our next guest. As I mentioned, last time we saw him in the cage uh, was around a month ago. That was in Croatia. Uh, obviously a disappointing night for him, but we do appreciate him coming on, especially with the heavyweights being so much in the news these days. We're being joined right now by Big Ben Rothwell. He is on the phone. Ben, how are you? I'm okay, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I really appreciate you joining us. Um, I, I said, and correct me if I'm wrong, is this your first interview since that fight against JDS? I was actually going to say it. I was going to start giving you shit about it. Being like, he's my first interview, so you better be happy. Oh, well, no. Oh, I, yeah, I said it at the top, but I wanted to make sure, you know, sometimes I miss things. Um, so, like I said, it, it was a month ago, um, and it was kind of, I mean, you, you, you were on a roll, and it just didn't seem like yourself. H have you... Have you watched the fight again? Have you been able to pinpoint what went wrong against JDS? I watched the fight, and um, it's good they do because what you think happens in your head is a lot different. Honestly, I thought it was a lot worse than when I watched the fight. There's, there's things in the fight that happen, and we'll talk about it, and then there's obviously things, you, you know, it isn't, you're not the only one. People can watch and visually tell that... I wasn't fighting at my potential and there, you know, the best way I can explain it for in and, and before the fight is simply a, a physical malfunction. Hmm. Like that's the best way to say it. Like a malfunction took place and really, I feel like I fought, uh, not just the, the best junior, but like that's a junior. Everybody's like, Oh my God, this could look like the guy from the old. And that's, that's who I showed up to fight. I said, I was, I was coming here to fight championship junior. Cause I do that to people. I bring up the best in them and it, it just further proves my point. And we went five rounds and this is, this is the way I'm handling this. I watched the fight. I know what was going on. There's things that I can talk about and there's things that I'm never going to say because I'm not making excuses. Hey, I went out there to win the fight and that's it. You know what I mean? I was healthy enough to go in there and fight and then that's the end of it. So there, there's nothing there. Hats off to him for, for it being his night. But I'm, I'm certain that I fought one of the best juniors is and, and he fought half of me, hmm. literally. And, my, you know, let's just hit the facts. My grappling is, is probably one of my stronger assets right now, just from what I know. And I know the rest of the world doesn't think I have anything off my back, and I don't know anything. Junior is terrified of my ground game. He wanted nothing to do with it. He was open in, in, in interviews, said so. And in the fight, he, he showed it. And just me not capitalizing and, and then just not able to use my grappling, not able to use my takedowns. It, it was, you know, it was, it was a detrimental to me in that fight into getting the fight to go my way and i took i stood there in front of him for five rounds you know what i mean and and went to the end and i i i, I remember watching the fight I'm, I'm the one landing the last shots at the end of the fifth round so to me it's it's not good enough it didn't it didn't knock him out it didn't win the fight but there's a lot of there there's a lot of positives for me that's like look at i'm throwing to the end of the fifth round i'm in the fifth round i think i added up this is close and might be wrong, but I think only eight heavyweights have ever went five rounds um, in, like, the history. And I'm talking all the way back to Randy Couture, Tim Sylvia, you know, Kane and, and Junior, Stipe. Uh, there's a couple more. So that in itself I feel like is, is, is something. It's, it shows that I'm there and I am, I am championship worthy. And, you know, I'll just look back at my friend Robbie Lawler. You know, he was he, he, he made his resurgence. He got to that title fight. Mine wasn't a title fight, but I feel like it could have been. And uh, he lost a fire-round decision only to come back and, and look what he's done now. I feel like I'm I'm very much – I'm just a heavyweight version of him. I'm, I'm following behind. It's kind of like, yeah, I learned a lot in this fire-round fight, a lot. And I feel like junior's junior. And – he, you know, hey, like I said, hats off to him for that night, but we're going to fight again, and I will beat him next time. So There's no doubt in my mind. When you describe it as a physical malfunction, is this something that you think happened in the cage? Were you feeling off all week? Did you foresee it? Like, like what more can you tell us about that? I just don't want to say anything wrong or anything, but, like, you know, you know, I, I, I just, I, if I, if I wanted to get pulled off the card, I, I could have medically, like no problem. Um, but I'm just too stubborn, and I'm, you know, I'm just, I, I guess, too tough for my own good. And uh, nothing was going to stop me from fighting. It, it, it just, just, it just sucks because, you know, I have to go back to, you know, why this fight sucks for me. Why is it, you know, losing's bad. No, it's, it's, it's that I didn't fulfill everything that I said I was going to do. I didn't back up everything that I said. I said, I'm a man of my word and I didn't follow through with it. So that hurts me more than anything. And it sucks because we went back nine weeks, eight weeks, 
well, no, it's been a month extra. So we got to go back 12 weeks to you and I were on the phone and you weren't excited about this fight. Yeah, man, you had all the reason not to be excited. You know, I was on a four-fight win streak and I took on a, I took on a guy with a loss. It was a stupid fight for me. So you uh, were strategically. Do you well. regret taking it, man? What? Do you regret taking the fight? I mean, there there's some there's regret and there's not. I, I think more not regret, but a learning lesson. Uh, I think like right after the fights, I need to be locked up and nobody and and, throw, and like somebody else needs to take my phone and I can just <laughs> take take my wallet because I like. I get crazy after a fight. I, it's when I do the craziest interviews with you. It's, it's when I'm off the wall, and I think I'm, I'm I get high off of the wins. I don't know what it is, but it's obviously I'm not thinking rationally at the time. And you know, it was good for the UFC because they got to fill a main event, and uh, it was just strategically stupid fight because I didn't realize that basically Croatia is Brazil. They built an American top team in the middle of Zagreb, and there was no chance of me winning the crowd at all. Mm. Like. You know what I mean? Junior's name has been pumped there for the last, I don't know how many months. They love Brazil now. They love American top team. You know what I mean? And they're very, they, they don't need to get, you know, they only needed Crow Cop to get behind. That's it. They just needed one thing to get behind. They'll, the whole country will get behind it. Well, they pretty much did that with American top team. And that was great for Junior. He had like a hometown advantage almost. And it just like like looking back on it, like not that I care. I've gone into hostile arenas and won many times. I don't I don't care about that. It's just strategically it didn't make any sense for me. And uh, yeah, so uh, there's going to be a little bit of regret, but at the end of the day, I, I I went to the fifth round and I learned. Um, basically, there's no amount dollar amount can can tell you the type of experience that I learned in those five rounds, especially the fourth and the fifth round. I learned the most about myself. And I, you know what I mean? Had I just physically been able to apply all of my game, yeah, I think Junior would have been a lot of trouble. I think one takedown completely changes that fight. So, and, so uh, sorry, go ahead. To, well, and just in the, and just in the fight, yeah, he hit me with a with a with a with a shot that everybody seen says probably would have knocked out most people. Dude, I was knocked out on my feet, and he hit me with that push kick, which yeah. I think I, I take push kicks fine. I can catch them. I know how to defend against them. I was half knocked out on my feet, and then it just looks bad. You know what I mean? It looked, he put, he push kicks me on the floor, and I, I think as bad as it looks is, it looks worse for him because if I was him, I finished that fight. I finish me. I finish whoever I am, and that's in that situation. He let me get back up and get back in the – I fought three more rounds after that. So – I just realized that I'm tougher than, than I, I, I even knew, and I can go through a lot. And there's times where people are like, why do I keep going forward? Because I'm never going to show you how hurt I am. Because the second I started stepping back, Junior, you could see it. He's ready to go crazy. He's ready to come in. And, and I was just proud of the fact that I was able to man up and keep putting up a front the entire fight. And it got myself into the point of the fourth and fifth round. I completely my, – my main state was like, you know, I needed a – to get in there and, and, and turn the fight around. And um, I said right to the end of the fifth round, I could have won that fight still. So that's it. Long-winded, just, you know, obviously frustrated. But, I'm, I'm you know, I might have I might have took a loss on my record, but I'm far from defeated. In fact, I'm very much the opposite. I think that that fight gave me the, the fuel and the, and the knowledge that I needed to really take myself to uh, being the best mixed martial artist that I, I can be. And that's my new goal is no more about the title. I'm done mm. chasing something that I have no control over. I'm I'm back to why I started the sport. I'm, it's to find out how good I can really be. And with each and every fight from here on out, that's my focus is is what I'm – is in myself and in the kind of mixed martial artist that I can be in and outside of the cage. So I've, I've, I've cracked a lot, and this fight gave me a lot of insight and – that's it. I'm going to move forward. Well, very good to hear that you, you're, you're taking that approach. You know, you hear that sometimes. I'm reminded of what Dominic Cruz said to me after he won the belt in January. I asked him if that was the happiest day of his life, and he said the happiest day of his life was when he realized he didn't need the belt to be happy. And you often hear from guys that good things start to happen in their title chase when they just stop focusing and harping on the belt. So I, I think that's a very positive outlook. Um, I'm wondering if that came to you right after the fight or, you know, was, was the trip home a nightmare? Were you licking your wounds? How long did it take for you to come to this conclusion where you are right now? 
I think it was kind of like an ongoing, like the, the thought was just kind of right. I mean, I mean, after in the, at the hotel on the way home, just you're, 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 you're a lot of, a lot of, a lot of thoughts. Are, you're trying to figure things out, you know, what went wrong, what's happening, what am I going to do next? And that was one of the things that just kind of entered my mind. It's like, dude, stop chasing something you have no control over. Mm-hmm. Like really like deciding, like if you're ever going to get the fight for it, you know, and, and stuff like that. Like, it doesn't even matter, and it's not going to define who I am. And, you know, the kind of mixed martial artist, that, that's that going to be with me the rest of my life. You know, you can be a champion and be a complete shit person. There's, there's proof of it. We, we see them right now. <laughs> so that doesn't mean anything. You know, you're a champion. It doesn't mean you're a good person. So I, I just need to, to really just refocus on, on why I even got into this and focus on my gym that's changing people's lives and, and, and focus on things that, Money can't buy. I think those are the most powerful things that you can deal with while you have time on this planet before you die. And because uh, you can have all the money in the world, and guess what? You're not going to take it with you when you die. But all the good things or all the bad things you've done to people, that will live on forever. So how that's do, what I learned as a mixed martial artist. How does Ben Rothwell right now, considering what happened in that fight, considering what you did to Overeem a couple of years ago, how do you react to yesterday's fight and now the possibility of him being next in line for the title? How does that feel? I don't feel anything. I'm numb to it because it's just the way it is. I mean, what am I going to do? Like, you know, he, he just got to the fourth, you know, four fight win, you know, streak. You know, if you look at it on paper, him and I are both four and one, though. Mm-hmm. And his last loss is to me. So yeah. I don't even care. I know that he's the most recent without a loss. So it's great. Like, so he's getting the, the door open for him. But I don't give a shit. There's nothing I can do about what other people are doing. And looking at the fight, I think Junior or I defeat Overeem or Orlovsky, no problem. You know, um, Even though Overeem just beat Junior I, in December. Yeah, and Junior looked like a completely he looked, different he did. guy, didn't he? Yeah, how, how, what's your theory on that? Were you expecting that? I know you said you wanted that. I don't want to talk about anything controversial. So no, no, I, mean, I wasn't getting that. I mean, he, he literally... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the body shots, I wasn't expecting that. I mean, he just... I don't know. I don't know what happened. Did he start believing in himself more? Did he? Re- I don't know. What, what do you? In eight weeks. You think eight it's a, weeks too. So I was pretty. So what do you think? Turn on. So you think? So I mean, I got to ask now. In this in this era, this USADA era, you think something funny was up? <clears throat> no comment. Fair enough. All right. Um, well, that's interesting because you you you'd like to think that in this era that stuff but i'm not that naive um i'll tell you this okay I'll tell you this i'm not saying anything about my i'm talking this is to every weight class and this is the men's and women's divisions there's guys still 100 percent cheating with usada going on sure sure i mean i know there's yeah. always ways let's, yeah. let's just make it fair clear. enough like so you know it you know it i know it and that's why people keep getting busted because people are still cheating okay and that's it um and so that's it. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing I can do about that except for I need to improve myself so that I can defeat that no matter what. Like, you know what I mean? If I don't want to fight with cheaters and I just need to quit the sport right now. Did, did you think of that? Come in here and be like, I'm going to beat cheaters. That's me. That's that's the way I've handled this last few years and I'm just going to stick to that and that's it. But Ben, if you think that people are cheating and you're getting in there in the cage with them, how do you do that with a clear conscience? Like, how do you know that you're getting into a fist fight in a cage with someone or people, like there's a chance that they're still cheating in this day and age, especially with all the testing going on. I mean, do you feel comfortable with that? After that fight, did you even consider not How fighting anymore? I feel comfortable with it. You, I mean, you're in your voice right now. You can, you're can, you getting angry just thinking about yeah. being in someone's So shoes. why do you do it? Why it do you continue? Man, and there's nothing you can, like I said, if you don't want to deal with it, then retire or don't fight no more. I have to, I train so in such a way that I know that they are. I'm going to beat you anyway. Okay. Because I'm that badass. I know that I can be. And it sucks because if the person wasn't, oh, they go down quicker from some of the shots they were taking. They don't last as long. They're, dude, yeah, the, the dude, there's no, the people cheat because it, it does work. It does help them, you know, mentally and physically. Gives them more confidence. Gives them, you know, lets them recover from the shitty training that they're doing. Like, yeah, it, it sucks, and and obviously it's a problem. That's why USADA was even created. But that's it, man. It's okay. never. I don't think cheating. There's too much money involved, and I think cheating's always going to be there. 
have we started to think about what's next yet? Any talks? Any plans in your mind? What are you feeling? I mean, I don't want. I mean, I, every time I call out anybody, I don't no. really seem to get it until after the fact. But I mean, obviously, the losers. You know, I would love to fight a winner of the next three fights. So this this one was a major one. Yeah, we got Steve Bain Verdum, and we got Velasquez and Brown. That's that's the three fights that I've really been paying attention to because I feel like my next opponent would be taken on one of those six guys. Yes. Most likely one of the losers of those six guys. I'm more pushing for the loser of the Steve A. Verdum or obviously Orlovsky now. Um, I'll happily rematch, rematch over him, but I don't think he's too interested in that right now. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, obviously I'm going to be seeing, seeing what, what Orlovsky wants to do and, and if the UFC wants that, or obviously the loser of Steve A. Verdum would be a, an excellent fight as well. So one of those one of those is what I'd really like to push for because Brown and Velasquez are all we're not till July, and then who knows, you know what I mean. So there's there's things in there. I know I know it's kind of I mean you guys have changed so much since the fight happened and the um, the 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 surroundings and the stage in which you fought had a big part in why the fight turned out to be not one of the best. But how about a Mark Hunt rematch? On a, on, a, on, a, on a normal, you know, in normal elevation and all that. Do you think about that? Does that interest you? Um, I mean, I don't really think about it just because I'm, like I said, one of, one of those two guys I was trying, I mean, Mark's always dangerous. I mean, he's always, uh, for, I, I look at him as an inspiration. Yeah. How old he is and he's yeah. still in there hacking it out. And, you know, that's <laughs> an inspiration to me. It's funny because a lot of the guys are still older than me. There's only a couple that are younger. So it's like I, these guys are definitely my, my inspiration and my motivation. Um, you know, so so with that being said, you know, Mark's still putting some good wins together. He's in the mix. Um, I, I just feel like some, there were some other fights that made more sense for for guys than that. And I feel like I'm right in this spot, or I, I don't know. Like I feel like I, I was on a, you know, I'm I'm four and one. I feel like, yeah, and I took the crappy fight. I feel like I deserve a, a an Orlovsky or a Stipe Verdum. You know what I mean? But that, that what you what you think and what actually happens doesn't mean anything. So we'll see what happens, but will you watch? I, I figured I haven't got, to, this is another reason that's a, that would be my first rematch of one of my losses. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm starting to get a couple more of them. Now I, I used to keep, it used to only be a couple guys and now there's now there's in the top 10. Now there's four guys here that potentially could be a, a rematch. Uh, I definitely want some redemption. But I definitely want to attack the higher ranked guys because I feel like it, it means more, you know. Fair enough. Um, will you watch the 198 main event this weekend? And if so, curious because it's your division. Who's your pick? Yeah, it's tough. I, mean, I like, like personally, I have a more relationship with Stipe. So yeah. I'm like, unconsciously kind of rooting for him. You know what I mean? Like both both guys are are in my. You know what I mean? Like they're in the mix and guys that I probably have to fight, but. Um, I like Verdum. I mean, you know, he's always been a really nice guy too, but I just, Stipe is a Midwest guy. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like Stipe has really got a lot going against him. I know he's fought in Brazil before, but I think this is going to be a whole other animal. You know, yeah. he's not fighting Magladano. He's fighting the <laughs> champion and he's fighting champion in his home turf. And I don't even think Brazil cared about Magladano. Like when they, when Stipe fought him, not no disrespect to him, but it's not the same as when you fight one of the heroes. And Verdum's going to have that crowd the whole week of the fight. Right now, Steve A's going to be dealing with things the week of the fight. Like people, do people mess with you? They do. When you're when you're fighting someone's turf, you know you like you got to be careful where you go buy your coffee, where you go buy your food. Like I, at all times, you got to keep your you looking over your shoulder. That's just how it is. And in Brazil, it's going to be present to the highest extent, in my experience. So Stipe really has a huge hill to climb. I mean, he does. And um, I, on the feet, I think, is where Stipe feels he's going to win. I think he sees some of the weaknesses that I see, and he feels he can catch that chin. And he can, and that's how he's going to win the fight. But if he starts using his Mark Hunt game plan, or he's going to start pulling Verdum down, obviously that's going to be tough for him because I haven't seen much of Stipe's submission defense, and I haven't really seen him apply many diff- submissions of his own. And, um, you know, Verdum is very crafty, and uh, he can even turn submissions on the feet, you know what I mean? So he's he's got those, and I'm not sure of Stipe, how prepared he is for those. That could be the, the changing factor if, if Stipe doesn't start lighting him up on the feet. That and just how he looks in the first couple minutes 
you know, is really going to let me know how the whole week of the fight has treated him. Yeah. Um, Stipe comes out there and looks not right, kind of slow. I mean, all right, something happened. I and mean, it'll be a bummer. Well, the uh, the odds certainly stacked against him on this one. 45,000 people yeah, they, they are, are. expecting. Um, but it's, it's going to be interesting. Ben, I appreciate you stopping by. I appreciate you coming to us. Uh, for your first interview after the fight. And I'm looking forward to what's next. Uh, I think we've learned in this sport, one loss, the grand scheme of things, uh, doesn't always affect you. Get one win back under your belt and all of a sudden people are talking title shot again. So hopefully for your sake, just a little speed bump and and that you do get that elusive title shot. But I I do think that you have the right mindset now. So uh, kudos on that and uh, appreciate the time. Thank you very much for coming on. Hey, I just want you to know that um, I do miss seeing you on, on on TV. Thank you. I'm stuff. So I thought you're doing a great job. And I, like I said, I don't know anything. I'm completely ignorant to the situation, but whatever it is, whatever, uh, I still love you doing your thing and, and happy to be on your show and support you. So thank you. You are the man, Ben. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me. Thank you. Right on brother. You have I, a good one. I appreciate it. There he is. Ben Rothwell. Always great to talk to him. Appreciate his time and, uh, his candor as well.